What's up, everyone? It is no secret that I love the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I think I've said it on the show before, but there was like a two or three year span when I was a kid where I liked the Power Rangers more than even Marvel and DC superheroes. If I had to guess, I bet that some of my fellow 90s kids know what I'm talking about. The Power Rangers were pretty much the end-all be-all for a while. For example, when the cast did a live show at Universal Studios Hollywood in 1994, they caused an eight mile long traffic jam that stretched all the way to downtown Los Angeles. Whoa. You said it, Keanu. They were basically the Beatles of Saturday mornings. Point is, when I found out that DC Comics and Boom Studios were doing a crossover series with the freaking Justice League and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, one might say I got a little excited. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, the series ended up being fun, though slightly underwhelming, but the first two issues of the six-issue limited series were by far my favorite parts of the entire story. Mostly because we got to see the Justice League go to battle against the Power Rangers before they realized they're on the same side. And for today, that's mainly what we're going to focus on. The second half of the overall series was a very straightforward storyline where the two sides team up to fight the Power Rangers villain Lord Zed and the Just League villain Brainiac, who have also teamed up to conquer the world, blah 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 blah. It's time to conquer Earth! Despite that, the Just League fighting the OG Power Rangers was something I could have only dreamed to see as a kid, but the comic gods delivered. So let's dive in, shall we? one starts out 36 hours prior to present day with the Power Rangers teleporting to the command center. Once they're all there, Zordon tells them that Alpha 5 is missing and that the Rangers will have to split up and search the surrounding area for him. They do and Zack is eventually the one that finds him but sees that he's damaged and has been attacked. So he teleports him back to the command center right away. Once back, Zordon says something is wrong with Alpha and he's not just talking about the fact that he's hurt because at the same time, Alpha 5 starts melting and sparking and then blows up. The next page reveals that this isn't the real Alpha, but in fact a decoy bomb made by Lord Zed to blast his way into the command center to destroy Zordon and the Power Rangers once and for all. Zack still being the only Power Ranger in the command center isn't just going to sit around and let Zed kill Zordon, so he says the ever so famous line, it's morphin time, and turns into the Black Ranger. He starts fighting Zed and his team of putties, but Zed finally says, you can't defeat me, to which Zack says, I don't think I could defeat you, I just have to take you away. So he grabs Zed's arm and teleports them away against Zordon's wishes. Mid teleport, Zack lets go of Zed and loses him. We then see Zack hit the floor in a city somewhere and start fighting some putties that teleported with him, where he's quickly interrupted by freaking Batman telling him to put his axe down. Yeah, during the explosion in the command center, the ranger's teleporters were damaged causing Zack to teleport to another dimension, or more specifically, Gotham City. And this is where it starts to get good, my friends. Zack is like, I know what you are, you're one of Zed's monsters. But Batman is confused, not knowing what he's talking about or who or what a Zed is, and tells him, you're hurt, and you may have a concussion. Batman continues to say, I'm only going to ask you one more time to put your weapon down. Zack doesn't, and starts attacking Batman with his freaking power axe. But Batman being Batman blocks and disarms him, pinning him to the ground. And as soon as he does, the rest of the Power Rangers show up saying, hey, let our friend go. All the Rangers immediately start attacking Batman, so he's ducking and diving, throwing smoke and concussive bombs, all while on his comms, asking the Flash for some assistance. But eventually, Batman gets kicked in the back onto his Batmobile's hood by Tommy the Green Ranger. You guys know me, I'm a massive Batman fan, but it was still pretty cool to see my favorite Power Ranger kick the crap out of Batman. Anyway, as the Power Rangers are about to start attacking Batman again, the Flash shows up and quickly takes away all their weapons. That's right, the Power Sword, Axe, Bow, Dragon Dagger, etc. all taken away from them in the blink of an eye. Once disarmed, Batman tells the Flash, move, and shoots a Bat Missile at them from the Batmobile. With the Power Rangers starting to be at a disadvantage, Kimberly the Pink Ranger is like, it's time for the big guns, and yells out, Pterodactyl, Dinozord power, calling forth her Dinozord. That's right, the Justice League is about to fight the freaking Dinozords. I was nerding out so much the first time I read this. So, so good. Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Raptor Claw. That's not one. Anyway, Flash then calls Cyborg, who's on the watchtower, saying, I'm not quite sure how to say this, but Batman's being taken away by a flying pink dinosaur robot as it flies away with the Batmobile in its mouth. I said that. This brings us to issue two, which starts off with the rest of the Rangers regrouping on the ground, wondering where the heck the red one went, referring to the Flash. We then see Kimberly still flying in her Zord with the Batmobile still in its mouth. But she tells her fellow Rangers, there's something up here with me, someone flying. They ask, flying in what? She says, just flying in the air. Of course, this is Superman, who knocks on the window of her Zord and says, I'm going to have to ask you to land your pterodactyl. Meanwhile, John Stewart Green Lantern shows up and tries to contain the Power Rangers with his ring. But guess what? 
they just call on their zords as well, breaking out of his containment field. We then get some awesome action scenes of Green Lantern fighting the Dragon Zord and Tyrannosaurus Zord. We also see Cyborg blasting the Dragon Zord in the neck, and the Tyrannosaurus firing energy blasts from his eyes at the Justice League. At which point, the Flash stops this by phasing into the Tyrannosaurus Zord, and then phases the Red Ranger out. Again, this is the fight I never thought I would see, and it makes me so happy it happened. The Flash is then about to deliver a very swift left hook to the Red Ranger's face before being stopped by Superman. Ultimately, this whole misunderstanding is brought to an end when Wonder Woman uses her lasso of truth on the Pink Ranger. At which point, of course, they team up and battle Lord Zed and Brainiac, who as I said earlier, also teamed up. But as far as the Just League fighting the Power Rangers, that's pretty much the summary of it. However, I do suggest reading it for yourself as you'll catch a lot more detail and some pretty funny one-liners from certain characters. Like I said earlier, the series as a whole is nothing amazing, but it's definitely not bad either. The highlight for me was clearly the fight between the two teams, and I think definitely worth the read alone, because that's just a nerd dream come true. Plus, we get a lot of other cool moments in the book, like the Power Rangers dressing up in DC characters' armor slash costumes. Jason the Red Ranger literally wears Jason Todd's Red Hood helmet, and it's great. There's even a really great moment with Alpha 5, but I don't want to spoil too much. It's also cool how the book vaguely answers the question of who would win, the Justice League or the Power Rangers, because literally as the Flash was about to deliver a final blow to the Red Ranger, Superman stopped him. Wonder Woman was also able to subdue the Pink Ranger, and Superman didn't even throw a single punch. Imagine if he did. Although I feel like it's kind of obvious the Just League would be able to defeat the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but if you had any doubt, this book basically answers that. In any case, let me know what you think of this crossover. Did you read it? Will you read it? And do you want us to do more Power Rangers themed episodes? Let us know in the comment section. Other than that, you guys know the deal. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links for those are always in the description. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.